we go. Hey, this is Flash at the Dork Table doing an unusual Sunday morning extravaganza with a couple of co-hostages. I managed to scrounge up my good buddy Rob Works and guess who? Larry Woods. You guys want to say hey? Hey. Good morning. Anyway, so uh, the two of these guys are uh, more involved in the electronics and the the, mag- the magnetics and the wavelengths. They're, this is where the knowledge comes from. So I'm just going to start giving them questions to fuck with them and get them talking. And I think the first thing is uh, the illusion that uh, we need to always go out and create sources of energy and go to war for sources and that instead of it being abundant and free to human life we are forced to go take it is that a good question or not it's more like a statement <laughs> okay well i'm it's i'm asking there. well okay do you disagree with uh, my point i do here? not I, I i don't disagree with that the we uh, the technology has been suppressed for so long i mean we could have had this long long ago with tesla um yeah which is some of the technology uh, that Larry's been working on. And that's what I got excited about uh, after watching this uh, Nassim Haramein video uh, where he talks about the, um, well, as Larry just mentioned, the tree of life, um, the symbology, uh, and, the, and it's actually a, a diagram. It's actually, they actually gave us the physical dimensional specs for the the building box of of reality so to speak would you agree with that larry absolutely uh let me let me start with sort of a broad statement everything 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 from a photon all the way to the universe Everything is a toroidal field. Everything has the Holy Trinity involved with it. That Holy Trinity is vibration, which causes electricity, which causes magnetism. Vibration, electricity, magnetism. That's the Holy Trinity. That creates a torus field, and everything that there is does that. And each of those torus fields or toroidal fields, however you want to call them, uh-huh. interact with one another to create matter, to create what we think of as an empty space, which is the most filled up place in the whole place. There's there's more stuff in what we think of as empty space than there is in solid space. Everything needed to make everything that there is is out there waiting to bump together and interact and coalesce to make matter exactly so you you're what you're saying is meshing just hand in hand with with uh what uh nassim Haramein is saying in yes that video um and as i was watching that he 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 did this diagram where he drew a circle and then he put a tetrahedron in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. And then he took another one and inverted it. And then yeah. pressed them together and that's, and then rotated counterclock or rotated 90 degrees. And that created this, the, I forget what he calls it. But. Merkaba. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Merkaba, that, okay. Merkaba. Merkaba, yeah. So yeah. that's what made me, I immediately thought of you, Larry, and your coil. Your coil is basically uh, this the same thing uh, using uh, a Starship coil design, basically. It's that same pattern, the 64 point. Does yours come out to 64? Uh, ours is 
Ours is a 12-circuit coil. See, what you're seeing in that Starship coil is everybody's idea of what it should be. That Starship coil is a two-dimensional representation. Right. And you take that and, and make it into a 3D onto your toroid. Absolutely. Put it on a donut. It's three-dimensional. Right. And, and it comes out with 12 circuits. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that comes out to 12. Yeah, that comes out to 12 circuits. And what this Starship coil is, is generally just one piece of wire. Okay. Our coil has yeah. 12 pieces of wire on it, all of them interacting with each other. Okay. Uh, the Starship coil twists its wire and crosses at uh, detrimental angles. When you when you cross a magnetic field, it's got to be either at 90 degrees or 180 degrees. And the Starship coil has got a lot smaller degree levels. Okay. Oh, yeah, but what does that mean to a simple guy like me? I mean, is there a is there something you could compare that to that I would probably see all the time and not really put it together that, oh, that explains this? Well, yeah, um, every single coil that's out there, no matter if it's just a piece of wire wrapped around your finger, every single coil out there does something. Some of them are more efficient than others. I just think we found an efficient way to do it. Yeah. And I don't think that yet we are the very best thing out there. I think we're the best thing out there so far, but I'm sure that there are improvements that can be made. Well, how well, are you, you going to... different applications as well. I mean, you've got energy generation and then and you've got other possibilities. Right, but how yeah. do you acquire other people's interest into this project that you've been working on all this time? without hitting their greed bone and all of a sudden they want you know they want it to be their uh intellectual property that you have to pay them for because that's the hold up in everything yeah uh we've we've had that problem with investors <coughs> it, it seems like the people with money don't have knowledge in this area and the people with knowledge in this area don't have money. So, <laughs> catch uh, 22. It's sort of like a 16 year old kid. You got to have a car to get a job. You got to have a job to get a car. Yep. Yeah. So, what road did you decide to use? We're going open source. Okay. And so, is it safe to claim that open source, in your opinion, at this point, is the answer to the problem? No. Okay. We can still get killed. Okay, how? But but how? Yeah. Uh, because when you try to patent anything like this, the government will classify it, and that means it means that you can still make your stuff, but the government owns it, and you only work for the government. And yeah. we don't want to kill people with this. It would be easy to do. But we don't want to kill people with this. We want to make a safe product that everybody can use to supply their own power. Hmm. That's all. Well, you know, the sad part about this to me, the way I look on all this, is the minute that you start thinking, as I've learned to think in my lifetime, about the lack of interest in turning a profit, then you start to see when you do good shit for other people, you get it returned to you in ways that you can't even break into back anyway. Blame. Yes, absolutely. You have to be tuned into that to even know it's there. Or you would just think, oh, look at how great I am. I get everything I want. No, I am not the sharpest pencil in the box. In mm, fact, I don't either. think that I know much at all. Yep. I'm kind of a dummy. Me too. I know, I know, but compared to some of the other dummies, we're not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> the, the way I feel about it is everybody has the same intellectual level. Mm. It's just that some people know different kinds of things than others. Mm. 
Well, how that, could open source actually take off and make this work the way that you envision it working without the uh, without that tech? I own the technology. I own the knowledge. You are my dog. You will get what I give you. Attitude that we've got from the system. Well, you just you just got to realize that you're doing this for the general public. You're not doing this for yourself. Uh, I've got a team that I think is absolutely brilliant right here that we that we developed this with. However, we are now since we went open source, we're studying with a group that. Is international, and these guys are sharp. They're really, really smart. They caught on real quick. Uh, we're teaching each other. Uh, our coils are now being incorporated in some other inventions that work, just enhancing them, making nice. them better. And that's all we're here for. And these guys have, have helped out so much and and even enlightened us on quite a few things. Uh so we're I'm real thrilled to be able to, to work with them. Well, that's that's the best thing I've heard so far. The, uh, we, we have a once a meet week meeting that lasts from noon until four thirty or five thirty in the afternoon. Really? Yeah, and, and do you, that's almost dawn for some of them. Do you ever go over because you're so enthralled in what you're talking about? <laughs> oh, golly, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because time oh, limits on, on topics like this. Like I said, two hours, we're going to do a show because Grimm's coming on with music later. But we had the appropriate time, so I thought, hey, let's just do this now and, and see what we come up with. Well, sure. But you... you uh, I guess you have just taken the ancient knowledge, the ancient technologies, and yeah. use them in the physical today world in, with the uh, with the materials available to you now that were available in, that are here today weren't here then. So in some respects, in the way I look at this, we're using different materials to get to where we're going than they did when they started. Uh possibly and we're going about it a little bit different way Every, like i said everything is frequency everything has got to do with vibration of some sort well the ancients that little handbag that they carried around the man purse and the and the cone i've seen those was, in the pictures yeah yeah the man purse was a power source it was a, a, a maybe a capacitor uh, maybe just some sort of a battery, like the Baghdad battery, but it focused through that pine cone frequency that made these things operate. Well, we've done the frequency between the magnetic field and the resonant field of the wire just because of the geometry. With a hallback array inside of our 12-circuit coil, it produces power without spinning, without moving the magnetic field. When you, okay. Uh, wow. In, in, <laughs> induction is moving a magnetic field past the conductor or a, con, a conductor past the magnetic field. Right. That's what generates power. That generates a DC charge. We have got a hallback array in the center of our coil that's static. That means not moving creates 12 volts. Now, when you create that 12 volts out of a coil, that's 12 volts DC. But because of the resonant frequency be, that's harmonic, uh, in harmony with the wire and the magnetic field, that creates a, a vibrational frequency that gives us 12 volts AC out of these coils. And as far as I know, there's not a coil out there that does that. Okay. For for people that don't understand, uh, could you t explain to us uh, basically what is a hallback array? Uh, a hallback array is a, uh, a collection of magnets that 
the way they're positioned has either more North Pole or more South Pole to it. And okay. with, with a South Pole hallback array, we're creating 12 volts AC without movement. And wow. Unheard of. Well, wait, wait, wait. Okay. If we're vibrating all the time and all this, where does the yeah. not movement part come in? I thought everything well, was constantly moving. Oh, okay. Everything's constantly moving, but in in our big world... I think he's talking have, about visible movement. Yeah, you, you have to physically move the magnetic field back and forth across the conductor. When When the magnetic field is sitting still... It still vibrates, but we can't see. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I see. I'm so simple, Larry. I took it for face value and thought, well, if it's not moving, it still. Well, no, it's moving so fast that your your abilities can't comprehend it. I got right. that. Yeah. Well, I try to explain that to people, and I always come out looking like some kind of pothead lunatic, you know, that's looking to sell some drugs to some poor slob. <laughs> you know, instead of well, my goal would really be would make this simple for somebody like myself. And sometimes I don't explain things well. Mm. No, you do very well. You were the first person that really got my attention on the yeah. free, uh, outside of Tesla because you know, the technology comes from it. But as far as somebody I could talk to and you know have a conversation with, you made it simple enough for me to make sense of it. I'm glad you brought up Tesla. Yeah, but being uh, able to explain it to others, uh, that yeah. that gift I don't, I don't have. Said that. Yeah. Yeah. But I have my own version of what you say that to me makes sense. So I, I attribute that to you, sir. Well, that's what I liked about the uh, Nassim Haramein video is he does that. He, he explains things uh, not from the purely scientific physicists uh, using their uh, terminologies and everything. He explains it in such a way that the layman can understand it. And it made so much sense to me, and I immediately thought of you, Larry, uh, when he talked about inverting that thing and then rotating it 90 degrees and pressing it together, and it creates a double toroid. Well, that's something that we've sort of expanded upon. Uh -huh. uh, instead of a double toroid, when you make that starship coil, which is a beautiful coil, uh -huh. but when you put that around a toroid, that turns into a triple Mobius. Do you know what a Mobius is? Uh, yeah, but go ahead and explain it. Uh, take a piece of ribbon. Put one twist in it and connect the ends together. Right. That means when you follow the path of that piece of ribbon, uh -huh. you go you go around the inside and the outside. You cover every single right. piece of that ribbon. Right. Well, we put an extra twist in it. Our our coil is nothing but a series of equilateral triangles that are wound around a toroidal shape, a donut. Right, just like Randy's donuts, and in the in the in the video that that uh, Randy Powell does about vortex math. Oh, okay. So, what that does is, uh, okay, it when when the power travels around that triple Mobius around the toroidal field, that creates a vortex, a tornado, uh -huh. inside the ring of the torus. And it, it magnifies the magnetic field inside that ring, which magnifies the magnetic field in the hole of the donut. Right. And by increasing the magnetic field, you magnetically decrease the resistance of the wire. What that does is allows you to carry more amperage 
through smaller wire. Okay. Oh. So, wow. so wire wire rated for point nine amps, less than one amp. We get thirty amps out of. When you put that same amount of wire on a standard coil, it starts a fire in three and a half minutes. When you put it around our coil and energize it, you get 30 amps out of it. At three volts, we get, wait a minute, let me start back with one more formula. One volt through one ohm of conductor yields one amp. Right. Okay. We put one volt through one ohm of conductor and get 10 amps. Yeah, that makes it easier to to understand. Okay. So with the, with the wire rated for 0.9 amps and we're getting 30 amps out of it, after 30 minutes, we get up to 120 degree temperature on that wire. The okay. insulation of that wire is rated for 200 degrees. After 45 minutes, we're still at 120 degrees. We are violating the principles of thermodynamics. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that something. So it, it has nothing to do with wire. It all has to do with a magnetic field. So these things actually ask for more load up to their maximum capabilities so when in in most circuits when you add a load the voltage drops we don't get a voltage drop we get a very 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 minute voltage drop what we get is a proportionate amperage increase increasing the amperage increases the magnetic field when you increase the magnetic field, it decreases the resistance of the wire, and you can put more amperage through it. Right. So it's, it's sort so of it's giving me more. Yeah. Uh, how, long did it, potential. how long did it take you to get from where you started to where you're at now, years-wise? Uh, I mean, were you always we our, always there mentally, but you couldn't physically prove it is what I mean? I, I didn't know how to ask that. It, yeah, uh, our first successful coil was after about uh, 20, 25 failures. But you had the uh, idea when you started, right? You just didn't know how to physically accomplish it? I just wanted to make a more efficient coil. Mm -hmm. the, uh, take a, take a, a generator. A generator, or, well, any coil. Take a transformer. A transformer changes one voltage to another voltage. That's all it does. But it wastes so much in heat yeah. that that it takes a lot of amperage to do that. I just wanted a more efficient coil. Coils now are 60% efficient at best. Uh, you can you can get them more efficient than that, but they cost a lot of money. Yeah. That's all I wanted yeah. to do was make a more efficient coil. These coils with the geometry in them, which is the, the vortex math geometry, we are able to eliminate the eddy current. Eddy current is a spot that's imperfect in the coil that creates heat. That heat right. is wasted. It takes more amperage to create that heat, and we've either eliminated them or captured all of them and reused them. Ah, see, I didn't know that that was possible. See, yeah. I'm I'm from the modern day, right, Larry, where all these words that they use, like, for example, you said transformer. First thing I thought of was that stupid movie where the machines that the robots that turn into cars and they take this makes that possible. <laughs> well, what I mean is, is the system takes things that are possible and makes them look ridiculous, so that we won't pursue. Hey, we could do that. A self-powered Iron Man suit with a coil that weighs a pound and a half that gives you thirty amps to to power that suit. Hmm? That's all you need. Okay, how do you? 
explain that to a person like me that's been brought up with all the bullshit that surrounds survival. Brainwashing, yeah. You know, you, this means that, and so-and-so said this, and, and here we are in 2020 fighting over fucking oil like a bunch of idiots. With, with education of the modern-day man, our thingy doesn't eat stuff. <laughs> hey, hey, that's a good slogan. I love it. Our thingy does neat stuff. Our per- thingy does neat stuff. Yeah, you just twenty percent off while supplies last. That's a good. Man. Oh, here's another thing I'd like you to, to explain how it, this would come up in the obsolescence plan, in the planned obsolescence of product to make profit. You can't do that if you tell us the truth. Well, okay, that's not our goal, because if I sell a generator to somebody that wants it for their house, I don't ever want to see them again. That's the part people don't believe, Larry. They're trained. Look at how trained I am. As a salesman, your survival is your repeat customers. See? Okay. I'm an old man, right? Yeah. So, So I figure... So use it up, use it up, squeeze it out, mm-hmm. fix it, or do without. Uh, That's my philosophy. Like that. I'm an old guy. Mm-hmm. My daddy told me a long time ago when electric windows in a car first came out, I said, Dad, why didn't you get electric windows on your new car? And he says, because something always breaks, and the more extra stuff you got, the more stuff you got that's going to break. He saw it so, coming, yeah. 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 I so worked for Ford, yeah. Principle. yeah. Yeah, KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid, yeah. and I am the last word. Yeah. I am stupid. Yeah, because uh, I, I, I used to be able to change the spark plugs on my 1964 car. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and in 1985, I couldn't find the spark yeah. plugs in the, the fucking plug. car. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Where, where'd you hide the spark plugs at? What, what do you mean hide? Well, they're gone. They're not here. Well, yeah, they are. They're underneath. Why? Profit. Obsole- obsolescence and, and necessity. You need this. And you, we're, we're sold all this crap, Larry. And I'm on your side. Free is free. It should be free yeah. for everybody. But we're all trained. You got to buy the machines. So you got that advantage going for you. But what the buyer is not going to believe the part they're going to be skeptical towards is oh yeah well sure you'll but you'll have me buying add-ons every six months i've got a computer i know all about that well we've got one part one electronic part only on our coil and all that is is a frequency modulation board that costs two dollars and fifty cents that any idiot can pull out and put a new one back in. And that's it. That's the only thing that can go wrong with our coil for 300 years until the magnets wear out. You mean as long as I know how to plug in and unplug my mouse on my computer, I'm qualified to operate your coil? That's it. It's a plug-and-play circuit board. Wow. Wow. Okay, nice. now we've got all this. Okay, but Larry, you got to realize well, we've got the modern mind to, to work against to convince them that this is not another hustle, a scam. Oh, look, these sharp, sharpie talking guys figured out a way to get in our wallet. Because that's what we're trained to believe. A generator now costs between $2 and $2.50 a watt. To, to make power. Uh, and 100 watts is a light bulb, one light bulb. So a three foot by five foot solar panel that gives you 45 watts isn't even enough to run a light bulb. It takes, <laughs> more, it takes more energy to create a solar panel than it produces in its entire lifetime. A solar panel is a whole bunch of tiny little photovoltaic cells that each produce a tiny bit of power, all in series. That means like, just like your Christmas lights, when one of them goes out, that whole panel is dead. 
that creates toxic waste. Yep. So why? Well, the point? here's another thing. Look what look what nuclear did legally with the the words that define what they're trying to accomplish. They they've managed to convince the public that toxic waste is something bad when toxic waste legally is what they're trying to acquire. Yeah, that's what they're making. Right, but they've conned the world into believing the opposite of what they're saying. Because the average Joe doesn't know legally it means something completely different. So in physical reality, you're talking this way. In legal reality, yeah, you're talking another fucking way and you don't even know it. Yeah. I've been trying to explain this to people and yeah, they don't want to hear it. It's just too ridiculous. Well, and here you are backing up my story. <laughs> every every, every uh, atomic plant in the world is either built on a fault line or a coastline where a, a tsunami or a tidal wave can take it out. Every That's one correct. of them. According to General Electric, who engineered every single one on the planet, they are made to fail so that he can give them can sell them more parts. We don't want to sell you more parts. We want you to be happy with something that's going to last you, your grandchildren, and your great grandchildren. And that's how it should be. Yeah. And and by then, if there's not a better way to do it, we are in sad shape as a nation. Well, that that goes without saying. Every every state nation yeah. is fucking sad. And it, it's not a lot of us that can look beyond all the perks and see the greed and the waste behind it all. Well, okay. If if our generator is successful and gets on the market, we've got every single household in the world to sell to. What bigger audience oh, yeah. could you have? I mean, gosh, what do you want? Seven billion customer potential. Yeah. Well, everything starts with one. Yeah. So, and boy, do we have. So, one. speaking of that, um, you had said you're going with an open source uh, uh, plan to yeah. to roll this out, um, and you had said that you haven't actually published anything. Where are you at with that? Uh, uh, this group that I'm with now, these guys are so much smarter than I am in so many different fields that uh -huh. when we all get together, everybody adds their little two cents into it, uh -huh. and it comes out with a whole picture. Uh, an earth battery, uh, Tesla tower, uh -huh. okay, that's, that's a glorified earth battery. Okay. There's a guy in the group that takes his equipment out anywhere he wants to, drives a ground rod into the ground and attaches to it and has unlimited power. Unlimited power. He can okay. power absolutely anything out of the earth. The earth is negative, the sky is positive, and everything in between is some sort of a capacitor. That means something that holds energy. Right. Including us, we're a machine. Yeah. Yeah, we, we hold a charge. Yeah. So with with that in mind, this guy's equipment is super duper. But a MOSFET is a set of diodes that makes the power go in one direction. Right. Okay. His equipment creates a big spike from 12 volts, which is what he gets out of the ground, with 12 volts, he gets a 3,000-volt spike, and that's blowing up his equipment. Uh -huh. So we we have first helped him introduce a capacitor and spark gap into his equipment to take that spike out. Right. Now, it's, Level it, it off. Yeah, when it's in his equipment and reused by that specific equipment, it causes problems and burns out components. When you take that and put it into a spark gap and a capacitor, you can use that 
for something different, or you can put that back, which is the negative side of the of the circuit. You can put that back into the positive side of the power supply and eliminate that spike. What does that accomplish, though? All right. So if you eliminate that, that the spike, puts, what 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 becomes of what you're trying to do? That puts more power back into the circuit and gives him a higher output. Wow. You're basically taking the spike and you're storing it. Yeah. Instead of uh, spark yeah. damping it off into space. Oh, so yeah. in, instead of the, the, the waste that we're presently creating with our appliances, you're figuring out a way to reuse that waste instead of wasting it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, well, here we are in this modern-day world where we've got cell phones and we can talk to France from Portugal Two seconds, boom, boom, boom. And I would assume because of this, people would be more open to your information. But I don't, I don't see that. No, because everybody wants to sell parts. I, wait, oh, all right. How do we break? Okay. How do we break into that and and fight this consumerism shit with? Hey, this is good for you. You only need one, and then you need a buy. Repl- oh, thanks, baby. You need to replace the part once. How often does the card need to be replaced you're talking about? Well, that's going to be a major problem. Okay. That card could only last about five years. But at $2.50 every five years, who cares? Plus the cost of the generator itself. So the longer you live, the better you know, the better the price is on it, I suppose. Yeah. But and, and we expect to be able to sell a generator at either a dollar a watt or less. What is that? Well, give me a value on that so I got some number to uh, attach to. Normal it. normal generators cost two dollars to two dollars and fifty cents a watt. Uh huh. And, and we're going to sell it for one. Well, what does that cost? Less. So I mean, uh, so a ten kilowatt generator is going to be ten grand. Uh, it's going to be more like twenty five grand. Well, that's two and a half dollars a watt. Yeah. So, so you're talking. To, so no, I'm talking of, about one of yours, Larry. One of your generators, a ten kilowatt generator, would be ten grand at the, at a dollar yeah, a watt. Yeah. yeah exactly. Oh, okay. So, but now if you as live, opposed to a ten kilowatt Honda generator, which would cost you a veteran. Uh, so, yeah. if you live for thirty years after buying this generator, say for a thousand dollars, we're just going to use round numbers so we can identify it. And then you have these cards you got to spend two dollars and fifty cents on, so you just probably buy a thirty-year supply up front. What does yeah, that amount to? Dollars. But that that's would be dollars. your your energy source for thirty. Say let's say, say thirty years. Ah, I got thirty years left if I'm lucky, right? Yeah. So I'm using myself, not somebody else. I'm just saying, Adam, what I understand what you guys are saying. So that would be compare that to the monthly electric bill, and boom, you. Saved yourself a ton of fiat currency. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, not only that, you now, became independent. What if the state that you reside in physically doesn't allow you the luxury of being self-sustaining with your electrical sources as they are now? They control everything. and You can't get off this fucking grid to be independent. Because they won't allow you because it's for your safety. Well, then you build a big ass laser because you got a power source to power it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rob. Well, I was being. They're, um, they're taxing solar energy, hmm. and that's supposed to be free. You know, the sun's there all the time. Yeah. And they're still taxing that. Yeah. So you're not going to get government out of it. But just like raising your kids, we have got to lead by example. Yes, sir. Well, I'm willing to back you up all I can, but I'm I'm married to a Dane in this you know, socialist country that, you know, for our own good and our safety, blah blah blah. You got to do things their way, or you you boom, you, you don't do nothing. That's and I, the way the United States is right. And as a guest here, married to one of their subjects, I abide by their freaking wants, so I don't get my wife in trouble. See, it doesn't go. It goes against my nature so many ways. 
but the results of being married outweigh the bad side, so I stay married. You know what I mean? Out of, res- it, out of respect for circle, you well, you play respect. By, I'm, play, I'm selfish. Play by the rules. My, my, my. Certain- yeah. Well, there you go. Because if uh, you were truly a rebel and free, you wouldn't be on the internet talking to Larry and Rob. But I want to be a rebel and be free, but I'm married, so I can only do it on the keyboard. Right. So, Larry, uh, I'm going to go back to the open source thing, and and I asked where you were with that. Mm. Um, what are we looking at as a timeline as far as when you're going to be ready to roll an actual product out to the market? Well, I've only been with this group now for about six months, and it's it's slow going. There's there's twelve people in the group counting me, okay, and we have to bring everybody up to speed. So it's an educational course. Okay. Uh, I've I teach with another man every single Monday uh, for four or five hours, and we're we're getting there. We finally got them understanding that there are better kind of coils than pancake coils. Uh-huh. Uh, the the man with the earth battery is blowing out sections of his of his pancake coils because of this. 3,000 volt spike. Right. It'll, it'll burn a half an inch of wire, just melt it, make yeah. it disappear. So uh, we're, we're getting that understood. We're discussing the safety factors. Right. Uh, don't look into the eye of the Gorgon like they said in Fantastic Planet. Uh, that means that. Don't stick your head over the coal. Oh, right. hey, don't, Larry. Don't, Larry, over the whole they're trying to find you on Facebook. What is your proper ID at Facebook? Sorry to interrupt he found like it. that. He found it. Oh, they did find it. Okay. I, I'm Lim- Limitless Energy Technologies. They, Are yeah. you still using that, Larry? That, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I post in that uh, everything that you would need to know to do what we're doing. I just don't put it all together for you. Uh, okay. I post math on that so that you understand why your stuff is doing what it's doing. Hmm. Uh, Well, what if you're, wait, 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 Larry. What if you're like me, and I don't really understand the math so much as I do the logic or the reason behind what you explained. You know, the numbers are very fun and all that crap, but eh, that's not my interest. I'm more into the, uh, what I feel I'm very subjective in how I take in information. If it doesn't feel right, I ignore it. Yours, even with the numbers, the numbers kind of baffle me, but I go, wow. You understand it. I can trust Larry. I don't need to prove Larry's telling the truth. See? That's where I, I'm, I'm beyond that with you because I've used your knowledge that you shared and came up with a positive result. So, therefore, I'm going, hey, yeah, Larry said so. I got it. I don't have to well, doubt you first and then make you prove it. But I'm going to do that on the radio because otherwise we wouldn't have anything to talk about. Well, yeah, for everybody else's benefit. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I, I'm sold. I found, I found out that wisdom simply means that you've messed up enough stuff that you know how to fix some of it. Some. Yeah, yeah some. some yeah. It. yeah. Boy, I'm telling you because... I live in a perfect world in my mind, but in my physical reality, it's got its flaws. And that's what electrical math is. That's in the perfect world, and it never works that way. Well, then why do they call it perfect math if it never works? <laughs> because we're only taught a three-dimensional math. That's volts, ohms, and amps. Mm-hmm. When, when electricity is five-dimensional, volts, ohms, amps, vibration... And magnetism. Mm. Now, is this old information that you're bringing to the present, or is this oh, your golly. version of the answer? No, it's, this is stuff from the previous civilization. Okay, All right. that's not, what I'm not saying. Not even the ancient Egyptians. Mm. Our ancient Egyptians are using technology, or were using technology that was twenty five thousand years old. From the last procession, 
not the current procession. But, Larry, most people are just trying to figure out who to vote for right now. They can't be bothered with all this. <laughs> That's why we're here. We're going to give you a box on, with wheels on it that you can yeah. roll around, and it's got a little box on the outside of it that you run two wires from to your main panel, and you're done for five years until you need to change that circuit board. Yeah. No, you probably stock up on about twenty five of those. And and this this machine itself, the generator itself, will never need to be improved. But the card what if the card needs to be improved? Uh, the card won't need to be improved. All it is is it gives you fifty four cycles. Every bit of equipment in the world runs on either fifty cycles or sixty cycles. And that equipment runs within or efficiently within 10% plus or minus. That means that 54 and 55 cycles per, per second will operate both pieces of equipment, the European and the American. Hmm. So, it, and it'll it, also be in harmony. Yeah, it'll be in harmony with nature at 432. If that's middle A, 54 is low A. 54 times 8 is 432. Huh. So it's in harmony. It's a choir that everybody is singing in key rather than the kind of power that we have now that's 440 frequency that is not in harmony with nature. It's making people sick. Cacophony. No. Hmm. And it was it was established sometime during the Second World War. Well, you know, being the devil's advocate with you two is... I'm having fun with it, but I'm really stretching to find argument. You know, I'm creating an argument that I don't support to give you an opportunity to explain why you're right and the rest of the world is wrong. And that's the core of everything. When you go against the grain and, oh, look at all the mistakes these idiots made. And then the average Joe, all he sees is roads and buildings and success because he's got a small brain doesn't have the interest in the first place to look beyond what he sees. You, All we want these yeah. days is convenience. That's why they're putting in 5G yep. that's going to kill people. People don't believe that either. No. Weapons-grade freaking technology right in front of you. All you got to do is read about it. It's been written about plenty of times. But look at the news. 5G is going to make your movie come on your phone faster, people. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's going to make you sterile just like the Wi-Fi in schools. When, you're, when your daughter goes from kindergarten to 12th grade in a Wi-Fi field, 50% of those little girls are going to be sterile. A little fewer percentage of the boys are going to be sterile. But that's and what society promotes. What's that going to do? That's what society promotes. That's what they want. Mm. The system wants that friction and, and that confusion and that despite and hatred to your towards yourself to reproduce. They don't want you to reproduce. It's bad for the environment. It's bad for the population. A bunch of shit. Nonsense. Mm -hmm. Why? You so can, that you they, can eliminate that problem by going hardwire. Right. But they've sold us through all these technologies that are yeah. really wasteful wastes of time. And when you say that out loud, boy, I've had my ass kicked on the radio plenty of times because I think everybody's doing everything fucking wrong. Except me. Because I know better. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way I feel about it. Everybody's crazy but me. <laughs> yeah. and it's, okay, now, how do we eliminate that judgment from the idea that you're pre presenting to us? you got something that's really good. I've tried to, to make this a point before, and it was a miserable failure. People didn't like it. Free energy? What are you, stupid? you got to dig for oil and, 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 and get solar. And that. Oh, please. No, you don't. You ever hear of Nikola Tesla, you monkeys? Fuck. Even I know who Nikola Tesla was, and I'm an idiot. Let's go to that for just a minute. That's why I brought him up, sir. <laughs> Uh, we have made some changes to the Tesla Tower, but it's still just an Earth battery, period. That's all it is. That's all a Tesla Tower is, is an Earth battery. Mm. 
it's it's absorbing the the energy the negative energy uh i don't want to say it like that uh the the neutral charge from the earth is being absorbed and turned into power through a tesla tower what our coil does we like how do i say this um Take a Tesla tower with the big the big donut on the top of it. We we put our coil on the top. We put a spiral <laughs> coil, a nine circuit spiral coil, under that, and spin a magnet in it. That nine circuit coil is simply nine circuits that make three rotations from the outside to the center of the coil. When you energize that with the 12 volts that we get AC from the other coil, then all you got to do is put a ball magnet in it, and it spins 3,000 RPMs a second. All by That's itself. All by itself. Well, with the with the twelve volts AC powering. Well, yeah, with the with coil. the power from the coil. Yeah. yeah. So so that magnet spinning, and that induces a charge into not only that coil, an additional charge, into not only that coil, but a twelve circuit coil that's above it and below it. So with with the proper orientation, you can make that whole thing levitate simply by putting the same magnetic fields together. You can eliminate the weight of that piece of equipment. Nice. So it, it's just mutual induction. You run that down through a barber pole. Uh, Tesla's center coil is tubular coil was all wound just round and round. Our center coil is wrapped like a barber pole so that it compresses that magnetic field and puts through induction, drives that magnetic field down to a pancake coil that's all the way at the bottom. So you're collecting out of four coils instead of one. Nice. So it it just a way to get more power out of a Tesla system, right? Well, listening to you is a lot like listening to that Nassim Harriman guy. He's very uh, simple. Just took the this quantum physics stuff that usually you get back. Oh, please! I don't got time to try to figure out your crap. And he made it simple, and he used common sense things to define really, really small things and really, really big things. And in a way, just put it in, in a sense of, in one way, we're all equal. And in another way, it's a matter of perspective. See, it's where you're looking at or from that matters. Not, it's not that we're all equal. We're all the same. We're all connected to the same field. The, when when you, you say matter of perspective, hmm? think about a cylinder. If you shine a light from the side of a cylinder, it'll look like a rectangle in the, in the shadow. If you shine it from the end of a cylinder, it'll look like a circle in the shadow. Mm -hmm. It's all a matter of perspective, how you look at things. Well, how do you practice. encourage a perspective open to see what you're showing people? Because that's the problem. It's not the – it's the delivery of the information that we get, and we're like – we're, we're trained to accept it in certain ways because we see it from certain vantage points. And what you say is so clear to me, and it doesn't, I don't understand how anybody else couldn't see it. So it's simply, so I'm kind of lost. Well, I'm kind of weird. I see everything in the ancient rock drawings and rock reliefs mm -hmm. as some sort of a, of a power device. I look yeah. at ancient Polish runes, the very first things that they used to, for language, a written language, and out of 20 symbols, six of them are either proton accelerators or plasma generators. 
they're not words. They may have been used to, to convey some thought, but they're not words. They're not writing. They're electrical symbols. And you can see that in almost all of the original script from different people, the runes from the different civilizations. If you're taught what to look for, I see, or if you have that knowledge, why would you even put that? If you have that interest, because some people, like myself, I'm not interested in something until somebody makes a point about it that I can understand. Then, hey, well, I didn't see it like that. And that's what I'm looking for with this free energy concept, because the word free has been so butchered by society. Not, that yeah, we, we don't miss number two. It's, yeah, not, it's, it's not, not free energy. Yeah, you're going to have to buy it from me because I'm not going to make it for nothing. <laughs> okay? But after that, then the energy that is produced is so low in expense that it's like being free. Oh, yeah, compared, sure. Yeah. And then the results, it, it's like uh, when I compared the people that lived 100 years ago, I was talking about it on on the dark table, and I said, oh, those people had it so hard. And I said, I don't think so. <clears throat> Their animals were, were more than likely able to feed on hemp. So when you slaughtered your animal, you weren't eating modern-day pesticides and poisons and God only knows what, you're eating, you know, uh, a natural animal eating natural products. And I think that mentality changed when we went to synthetics. That The hard life is the modern day, and the easy life is the old way when things were slower. And yeah, we didn't have all this healthy. shit to think about and decisions to make about what bank to borrow from to buy your fucking house. Like there's a difference, you know? Oh, but I can save a quarter of a percent if I go with John Smith. But Mary Jones, anyway. she wants an extra, I mean, crying out fucking loud. It's nonsense. But do we not accept it as reality? As a collective? Right. Yeah. Now, how do we get out of that crap and get into a small investment in your future could pay off tremendously. It sounds just like everything else that I've ever heard in the long run, but the details are different here. Yeah, we don't want to see you again unless you're buying one for your kid. Mm. How do you really yeah. need to do uh, that? Yeah, well, Larry, how do you get that across, though, Larry? I believe you, but I don't know how anybody else has ever done it. Well, okay. At at five thousand dollars for a five kilowatt unit, which is more than enough to run most houses, and if you need if you need more power, put two of these things in series. We've got it. We've got a seventeen coil system that operates off of ball magnets. Okay, you uh -huh. spin a big ball magnet in one big coil that you have to put AC power into which comes off of one of our other coils, and that spins the ball magnets in 16 other coils, making them produce energy for no cost, for just the cost of spinning that one magnetic ball. And it doesn't take hardly anything to do that, and we're getting that for free out of the coil anyway. So, And how much does the system generate? It, enough for small industry, and we could we could make it for megawatts if we made it big enough. So it's scalable. Yeah, everything is scalable from right. small to big. With right. metal printing, 3D printing now, that oh, means yeah. that every coil and every piece of electronic equipment, your cell phones, your computers, your TVs, everything that's electronic can be made cheaper, run cooler yeah. with smaller wire, and no iron cores. If you, okay, a 1500 watt, which is 1500 watt light bulbs, a 1500 watt iron core is eight inches around and it costs $105. Our six circuit coil 
is eight inches around. If you spent $25 to make the donut, you got $3 worth of wire on it, and you're done. I like that $28 idea. 28 bucks, as opposed to just a $105 coil that they put a lot more wire on to achieve the same thing. With yeah. a lot of waste. Yeah. With a lot of weight, yeah. Right. Well, see, I'm so clear on that waste concept, and I don't think other folks so much are. They don't see the waste because they see the the, the result produced by the thing, and they don't yeah. seem to get they the point. They don't take into consideration the heat that's generated. Yeah, no. it's that's a natural product of the. No, it's not. It's pretty much a... It's a planned obsolescence and right in front of you, telling you so. What happens so, when you build an inefficient system? Right. But yeah, they, they tell us so, Rob, and they tell us all the time, planned obsolescence, and we just accept it as a collective. Why? No, I don't. Profits. Oh, please. I could <laughs> find a lot of Jew bankers that would shoot you dead, son. Are you kidding? They so, want uh, you let's quiet. Let's go back to the science. Can oh, we? okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Larry, uh, one of the things that uh, Nassim Harman talks about, is how everything is a singularity. Yeah. Um, we singularity. Singularity, singularity is, is another word for black hole. Yeah. Um, and so everything from, from a proton all the way up to the universe we live in is a singularity, a black hole. The sun is a black hole. The earth is a black hole. You Every atom it. in your body is a black hole. You got it. And the sun you, you, is not an atomic explosion. I'm no. sorry. It's a plasma event. Right. That makes sense. Whoa, you and, guys are going to change history then. Because I got if told it were a bunch of stuff. an atomic explosion when there was a coronal emission, the spot that's left cold on the sun would be hotter because the closer you get to an atomic explosion, the hotter it is. That's right. not what we see. We see yeah. when that emission comes off the sun, there's a cold spot. That means it's an electrical discharge. I can recreate everything in the universe in an electrical laboratory. The dust clouds, the, the spiral clouds, the, the tree-shaped wow. root clouds, the, the everything. You can reproduce that in an electrical laboratory. That's why I know that the universe is a luxury. Hmm. Yeah, well, you know, when you throw all this religion and politics into the soup, then it starts to muddy the water so you really, you can't see and it clearly because you're being distracted by made-up stories that, that you believe are true because somebody told you so. And, and why is it religion? I, well, I was using it because in the old days the priests did not have to work; they were supported by the people. Therefore, they could have the knowledge. Oh, then when they weren't uh, well, either qualified or couldn't read, you know, they, that's one of the they weren't allowed to read. Thing ties together too, because he even goes and because all these religions are based on these ancient texts and and. Um, knowledge that people had um for example like in the bible in the front of the bible he points out that the word god in hebrew is actually uh, when you directly translate it translates to tetragram tetragrammaton yeah that didn't make any sense were you aware of that larry yeah Uh okay and and tetragrammaton in in the book of Numbers, yeah, where Moses numbers his tribes and their flocks and his armies, uh-huh. and gives them specific places to camp at night, right? Those are transformer frequencies, and when he made his people certain groups camp in the north, south, east, and west, right? Those were transformer configurations. That blueprints. each did a different thing. Yeah, yeah. It was a blueprint for the yeah. for the for a camp that generates power just by its nature of of configuration. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you guys make it well. See, it sounds like math is the the way to explain this. 
Okay, but it, math, it math has been made so uh, out of my reach by the academics of life. Oh, he's a mathematician, and oh, he's a this and that. Oh, Einstein said, and all this crap, right? So I'm kind yeah. of intimidated by the pompous attitude of the intellectual today. So it makes me go, eh, fuck them all. So I come into you guys that go, hey, we can take a very complicated thing, make it very simple for you if you want to hear it. There you go. And the theory of relativity is wrong. It's E equals the square root of MC. <laughs> oh, cool. Because in a magnetic field, okay, according to this theory, the faster you go, the more energy it takes. The more energy it takes and the faster you go, the more mass you accumulate. Therefore, it takes so much more energy to do it. That's wrong. Hmm. In a magnetic field, when you establish that magnetic field, you have captured that t moment in time and space in that magnetic field, and you carry that with you. As you go faster in space in a magnetic field and your mass grows, that's fine because the faster you go, the more energy you produce in our electric universe. Hmm. The more energy you produce, that eliminates the drag because you've still got all the power you need to keep going faster. Faster than light travel is possible. And I, vi I had a vision of a guy on a football field running with the ball, and then all everybody behind him, you know, 20 yards behind him, they're all running up to catch him. They can't because he's faster, he's lighter, he's faster. But, well, okay, but you know what I mean? I, I was just saying that guy running to the end zone to score his touchdown, and he's dragging 20 guys behind him that can't catch him. No matter what they do, they can't catch him. Why do they do this? What are they showing us with sports? You know, what What illusion are we visually seeing that, that fuels this, we can't do this other stuff? Because, see, we just showed you, and it doesn't, I can't translate it, the, the vision I have to words. You know, because the guy's running with a football doesn't, if they everybody stopped behind him, would he stop? No. Because he's moving forward, running away, right? Yep. Well, how does he even know they're chasing him? Because it's in the rules. <laughs> they have to. <laughs> well, I guess, okay. I guess what I'm going to is there's invisible rules to force in life that we don't acknowledge. We assume them because we see them on TV. And, and, it, and we've it, been told that it can't happen, and we believe what we were told. Exactly. I just don't know how to put words to that that would paint that picture for everybody to see what I was trying to, to, to find. My dad never told me that there was something I could not do. He said, try it and find out. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Because yeah. when I was swimming, some of these kids were a foot taller than me, and I could beat them in the water. And nobody could yeah. think, wow, how do you do that? Uh, I don't know. I just swim. Shaw burger. Fear. <laughs> <laughs> Let's I drag. don't want them to catch me. <laughs> but I don't. So we, we're t we're talking some ideas here that you know, the average Joe would never even discuss them with anybody. You probably just think stuff all by themselves, and then they they resort to television and internet to find an answer. And the answers that we're given are all designed to hit our sweet spot. Well, let. You've got people that listen to you that are building coils, right? I would hope so. It'd be you. I, you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, me. Uh, but there, there's a lot of guys out there that are making coils, and a lot of guys that are involved in rodent math and vortex math. So, it, I I've got an extensive electrical background. That means I've been shocked a bunch of times. <laughs> Uh, but I see everything as, as a motor or a generator or some sort of a machine, and and that may or may not be a good thing. But if if the people out there would 
let go of their book learning, of their basic knowledge. You got you got to have a basic knowledge, but you got to move beyond that. We're we're so trapped in what they told us in school that no copper is copper and you can't change it. We're not changing anything. All we're doing is allowing it to do all that it can do. Well, you know, let me ask you a question about the copper that might be kind of weird. Can men's mining principles and practices change the uh, the ability of the copper wire to produce whatever you're trying to get? Uh, no, I think that, that copper as a base element is always going to be copper. Okay. But you can allow it to exchange more electrons. Okay, let's go into that a bit. I mean, can you mix uh, it with other other metals to make it stronger or more efficient or whatever you might want to be trying to get to? Okay, there's a, a a process called doping, which is simply electrolysis that's been done since forever. Forever there has been electrolysis, almost, uh, back to the caveman days. And it happens naturally, yeah. It's yeah, naturally it, occurring. The the Native Americans mm-hmm. had piles of lodestone, magnetic rocks, around their base camps, around where they, they moved from season to season. And those rocks, in association with a piece of copper or a piece of metal of some sort, will stop pain. They heal. They make wounds heal faster. They make broken bones heal faster. It's the magnetic fields interacting with the conductors that do all this stuff. I thought it was the doctor that was doing it. <laughs> See what I mean? Simple. <laughs> the See? doctor just takes your money and tells you to go home and take two aspirin. Yes. Okay, yes. I know yes. that Quacks. from my experience, but other people who are dependent on the system for survival have a different look at medical. They don't I've got see... arthritis in both knees so bad that some days I can't walk. Mm-hmm. And when I get like that, I put a magnet on it and chase the pain. You put a magnet on it that draws the iron in your blood to that point in your body that enlarges your capillaries, brings the white blood cells to that point in your body, and makes your own body heal that spot. And what size and type of magnet are you referring to here? Any of them. I mean, does it have to be a big or a, a what's no. I mean? I don't know. What size of magnet would do that? I've got some round magnetic patches that are just specially made. They're more one pole than the other, but that doesn't really matter in the magnet. Uh, it does, but not in this case. Uh, and you put that on the spot that hurts, and that spot will stop hurting. Oh, what I, I meant, never... but Larry, what I meant was a, a magnet the size of what? A watch the size of a, a nickel, uh, a quarter, a dollar? I don't know. Uh, about the size of a silver dollar. Okay, so something you could put in the palm of your freaking hand, yeah. and you could put it on, say, your knee, and just take your hand away and leave it there? Yeah. Okay, how long does this process take for it to be effective? Uh, on me, it takes about 30 seconds. Wow. And that, that spot will stop hurting, and another spot close to it will start. Uh-huh. And I just move the magnet, and pretty soon you can move the magnet to all the spots that have hurt, and none of them will hurt anymore. Wow. Because I've been mm-hmm. using rosehip, and it's worked. Oh, yeah, rosehip is great. It, herbs are great. But you don't have to have them to solve many problems. Oh, in the oh, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. So here's a, an alternative. Herbs are, for chemical, herbs are for a chemical imbalance. Uh-huh. So you're offering a, a, an alternate solution to a, an existing problem is all. Yeah. Not, yeah. All. You're not replacing anything. You're just offering, hey, you can try this. This might work for you. Yeah. Because mm. that's what we lack in life, man. People don't. They they seem to always want to profit when they're trying to help you. So well, it's made me skeptical towards my fellow man because, well, what do you want? What do you want, well, man? You got to want something. 
and I don't really see you as the one guy. You're the one guy I don't see wants anything. Oh, well, yeah, I do. I do. Hmm. I I want people to be free of the burden of having to pay for your power every month. I want this project to provide a good living for both of my young partners. That's it. Mm-hmm. I'm an old man. I've got everything that I want. I've got all this stuff that I want. Mm-hmm. All I want now is a hug every now and then. That wow. makes me happy. Whoa. Well, yeah, that's kind of how I see. You're a little older than me. I, I hit 60 this last year. so I hit 70. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I didn't for, you know, I didn't forget the details, but I know you're a little older than I am. Rob's a little younger, but it's not the age or the time of life that you grew in that grew up in that seems to matter. It seems to me to be the willingness you have to listen to opposition. Because you're very opposite to what everything I've ever been told as a life form on this planet to survive. You need this, you need that. Here comes Larry going, yeah. no, nah, you, you need to rearrange the, or you need to rearrange the process and do it properly. You're doing it wrong. That's what I heard. That's all. Not a bad thing, not a good thing, because you, you're close, but you're not quite there. It's 54, not 60, monkey. Yeah, and, and it, the the people that are doing these coils and these experiments, some of these guys are brilliant in their own area, but have no electrical background, so they don't know that this stuff that they can't see and can't feel is killing them. All right. Oh, yeah, it's like the nuclear argument. You know, there's yeah. so many people like me. I'm I'm not sold on it, but other people are. I don't know how to explain it to anybody, but if you can't see it, you can't touch it, you can't smell it. What is it? Ugh, more of that stuff. Well, then you get into electric. You get into electricity though, and then if you handle your electricity properly, it doesn't hurt you. If you handle it improperly, guess what? You're gonna find yourself on your butt going, "How the fuck did this happen?" You know, with, with a pair of needle nose in your hand with a hole in the size of a dime in the center of it. <laughs> that 220 oh, has a kick, baby, let me tell you. Larry, uh, yes. have you uh, thought about or contemplated or uh, worked on any kind of way to possibly... The guys in the chat room have been talking about 5G and stuff, and, and I know that's one of your passions, is this, uh, the, the Wi-Fi stuff in the classrooms and the kids and making them sterile. Have you thought about uh, some way to neutralize that radiation with a um, some type of harmonic uh, I, I oppositional have, frequency broadcast or something absolutely, along those lines? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have provided the people that made the Tesla tower in Oklahoma, or in Texas, Texas just outside of Waco, I have provided them with the safe frequencies to broadcast in. Uh-huh. They've got them, whether they use them or not, that's up to them. But yes, why well, I'm talking I, about an active, I, active, uh, absolutely. neutralization, uh, type. Absolutely. When when it's broadcast in the proper frequencies, this stuff will make you more healthy. Right. I, what I they're doing that. now, it's going to be harmful to everybody. I get that. Uh, but what I'm saying is, is, okay, they're doing it now. I'm bathed in 5G right now. Hot Springs is completely covered, oh. according to the T-Mobile coverage map of 5G, which also the entire country is. Almost everywhere is already rolled. Five G is already rolled out everywhere. Yeah. Is basically what they're saying. So, would it be possible to create, set up some type of broadcast system that can broadcast? You know how like noise cancellation works. That's what I used to do. Yep. So, like. You could create a set of frequencies that, when broadcast, would make would neutralize sound. Okay, so you wouldn't be able to hear thing anything or a certain thing. 
can we do something along those lines with Wi-Fi radiation, 5G, whatever? Yeah, absolutely. Change the frequency that it's projected at. That's all you got to do. Oh, and I that, understand that. That's, 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 that's not what I'm asking. That's How not do you what I'm change asking. the frequency at your will? If you don't know if what we can, frequency If we could is. change the broadcast frequency, that would be great. Right, but, but for me... Okay, assuming we... Stop, Flash. But, Rob, we can't I don't know. Change, we can't change the broadcast. They're going to broadcast their shit in, however they want to. Can we come up with a signal antenna that I could put out in my yard and broadcast a signal that will neutralize the 5G radiation. Yes, but they'll come and put you in jail because you have stopped their system from working in that area. Okay, so you don't put it at your own house. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Put it on your mayor's house. <laughs> Set it up at the fire station or something. <laughs> they would appreciate that. Wow, so you can't even fight it? No. Because I, I, I read all the laws were written well ahead of time to, you can't fight this in court outside of the aesthetics of the 5G implement. The thing they use to give it to you, the only legal course you have is you don't like the way it looks. You can't argue its health benefits in court. It all boils down to he who has the most money wins. Yeah, mm -hmm. he who has the goal makes the rules. Uh, yeah. So there is an answer to it, but you can't use the answer because what? I and you guys wonder why I'm so because it cuts into somebody's profit, and then they can't yeah. get a new yacht. Well, there, there's not a frequency out there that cannot be canceled. That's, when you that's cancel, what I was, that was my point. I yeah. kind of knew that, but I wanted to hear it from you. <laughs> and and that's the way Lee Scowden lifted his rocks. He canceled yeah. the subatomic yeah. frequency of that particular stone. Yeah. <laughs> and made it and made it uh, ignore made gravity. It, yeah, yeah, made it ignore gravity. Push it with your finger. Yeah, I know. And I've been can, to that place and I saw it with my own eyes. And it was just amazing. Yeah, I went there when I was fourteen years old. When wow, I was Coral Gables, and it is amazing. Yeah, I saw it ninety one. Yeah. Cool stuff. Uh, it was, and they don't even Coral know Gables. all the secrets that he was using. Oh yeah, they oh, do. We sure do they do. They bought them up yeah. and they stopped anybody from using them. Yep. Oh man, you know what? As soon as you talk to more than ten people about something that's true, the government intervenes and shuts you down. Oh yeah, can't be having none of that. Because and so you know, the bigger your audience is, the closer you're getting to being silenced. Don't be trying to get all independent over there. <laughs> nope. We need. We need you dependent and, yep. and, and, and yeah. subject to whatever we decide. I know, Rob. Isn't it something? Okay. It, well, and it's all based on money. You child people that. And they, even the religious people go, money is the root of all evil and all that nonsense. But you dig a little deeper. But they still it, charge you tithing of 10% of everything you make, don't they? Yeah, mm -hmm. cause God can't handle a checkbook. Yeah, uh, throw it up in the air. What God wants, He'll take. Yeah, George Carlin taught me that part. Yep. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, and then they'll tell you to render under Caesar. Mm. Are you Caesar? Hell no. Am I Caesar? Then who's the hell is Caesar? <laughs> the maybe, government. Maybe we're all Caesar. Mm -hmm. Well, in this, <laughs> in this uh, <laughs> life. <laughs> That we're experiencing. <laughs> Hold on, my hit. Take another hit. I already hit. Anyway, <laughs> in this life that we're experiencing, okay, we are indoctrinated to believe certain things beyond our control. Okay, I know it. I'm a victim of it myself in some areas. In some areas, I escaped it. I'm hoping electricity is one of the escapes I accomplished. I know I got free of cannabis and hemp, but this electric world is so complex and there's so seemingly much to it that it's overwhelming. And then when you take it down to the level that you guys talk about it at, then it makes it simple. Okay, So I see the answer, but 
I don't think other people want a simple answer. They want to be dazzled with the lights and the flashy words and all that kind of shit. Yeah. Well, they're so used to being bullshitted that it's they don't. Like, if it's not full of bullshit, they don't believe it. It's like wiring a building. Hmm. When it's finished, you've got ten miles worth of wire in one building. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. to do it, you do it one wire at a time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You got me there. You got me there. Well, I'm just not feeling particularly hopeful in this time of history with you know what I see on the internet webs and the way people get along with each other for the most part is just appalling. All the competition and the better thans and I know this and I know that. You don't know shit. You're a fucking idiot. You're this, and you're that. And it's so it's distraction from concepts like what you're presenting, Larry, and the questions Rob's got for you. Because my Aren't questions we... were just to make you answer stuff to prove yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it worked because you do. I've yet to be able to catch you in a in a corner that you painted yourself into and see, yeah, Larry was wrong. But I'm still trying. <laughs> I'm doing my best, but I don't know. I can't find a way. We can all do it. We can all do it. Everybody in the world knows stuff that I do not know. And I want to know what they know. Open source, then, would be yeah. seem to me to be... I've always been a, been a big believer in open source, that's for sure. Yeah, but you were, the, you were way back there in the beginning when people were still looking at it like, uh, it's fire, it could hurt me, uh, you know? <laughs> Well, yeah, that's how we I are with new things. Like open source as, a, as an advertising war, and I don't want to do that. Well, what do yeah. you – okay, all right, here we – we're at the end. we got 20, 30 minutes or so left, right? Why don't you guys go on and, and tell me what you want and tell and in a way that I'll want it to you? Energy independence? For everyone. Yeah. No matter what color. What about that nigger in the corner? Him too? Yep. I don't care. I'm just playing. I don't either. I, don't. I just like I, to say bad words on the radio because it makes people sweat. Crazy. Nut. Well, yeah, well, yeah, but, you know. It don't just, matter if you're no, purple or orange. There's, no. or there's a saying. There's a saying, and, and I know you've heard it, Flash. Um, it's, a, it's a big deal in the sales world. It's called uh, a rising tide raises all ships. There you go. So and it can do nothing but there. good for everyone. If everyone becomes energy independent, you take all of the power away from the powers that be because that's how they control us is through energy, yeah. through the through the, the monopolies on oil and, and power generation and all the different things, hydropower, wind power, solar, all of that. The big corps have all that shit wrapped up. But if you oh. come out with a device that you can buy for $5,000 and have power for the rest of your life, enough power to run a home. And then on top of that, Rob, when you get more people wanting something, it brings the costs down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mass production yeah. brings, brings Scarcity down. Scarcity makes... Anyway. Things expensive because oh look well, at the rich guy can have it but you can't poor fucker. It's it's like Larry you said uh, you know you're talking twenty five bucks for the toroid and five dollars worth of wire. Yeah. To build one of these coils plus a two dollar and fifty cent circuit board. Yeah. Um. That's uh, that's that's getting really cheap. Well, okay. you, you can put bells and whistles on it and gauges and lights and. Like, wheels yeah. on it and everything else to make it more expensive. But the basic five kilowatt unit the principle. Yeah. Is, that's gonna be a couple is, hundred bucks. It's basic and simple and most people don't need all the bells and whistles. Yeah. All they need to know is that when you turn the damn light switch on, the freaking light comes on. So yeah. Larry wants me to live as long as at least Larry has. With a a, a better quality of physical fucking light. Not some drudgery. Work hard. Make me money. Go over and there and do this for me. What will happen is 
what will happen is, is as as people become independent from all this crap, they will have time to raise up from the get their nose off the damn grindstone long enough to look around, see what the fuck's going on around them. Mm. Well, like, that's the problem. They got everybody running around through the damn rat race, mm. spinning their wheels, chasing the dollar, trying to keep their head above water and yeah. feed their family. Yeah. yeah. Look at the prices. That tells you what you need to know. And, and, and look, <sighs> look at transportation. Mm. Look at transportation. We've got designs for electric self-powered Helicopters that have no batteries, self-powered cars that have no batteries that you drive to work. And when you get to work, you plug into the building to charge the building from your car. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So this is the, the free power is simply the very first baby step. The implications are insanely massive. I I saw a link of a teenage schoolgirl that had designed a flashlight that worked off the power of her body as a source of energy. And this is years ago. And then it disappeared. It's gone. Poof. Where'd where'd it go? Or, or, and here's another example, is the the carburetor that runs on water. Mm -hmm. Where'd that go? All these things that are, you know, well, we can't do this because... We need this. It's, just it's a matter of national security. Yeah, it's a load of yeah. crap. Well, you can't convince people that you're being lied to by their government. You sound like a nut when you do that to these yo-yos. Because they by both, national, we mean the oligarchy. They support, they believe the lies. If they can't help it, it's in their indoctrination. You're, we're fighting a real big fire with a squirt gun. And I'm yeah. not I'm not going to quit because of it. I'm and just, that's why I, I, I applaud you, Larry, for, for going to the open source. Yeah, I, I, big time. I, I said it all along. Um, mm-hmm. It's the only way we're going to beat these people. The greed factor is what's what's really screwing it up for everyone. How do you Want avoid the, the greed factor, Want to keep, though? Keep ownership of your idea, which was never your idea to begin with. Right. Because it all comes out of the ether anyway. All the ideas come from the same place. But and how so do you avoid the greed to say thing? Somebody right? owns an idea is completely ludicrous and ridiculous. To us, uh, not to the person that thinks they own it. They believe that shit. Yeah, well, fuck them. <laughs> the point is, <laughs> no. the point is, is we need people yeah. like you, Larry, and, that have these things to get over that hump of of I've got to make a living and stuff. And you're in that position in life where you've already got what you need. You don't. You're not doing this for for money. You're doing it because you want to give something back to to humanity. I'm doing it because it thrills me to death. Well, yeah, and that I love. There it. is that. <laughs> there is that. So, yeah, just being doing something that that really can totally change the course of humanity, and uh, we've got to get it out there. That's the thing. Yeah. So that's that's my big deal. Is is we, we, what ha- what needs to happen is is you need to come up with a a easy to follow set of plans. Yes, and we've done that. Publish we're, that shit far and wide. We're we're doing that in the FESIG group, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm gathering. So. Yeah, that open source group. We're writing right, right. a technical manual. We're writing a safety manual. Uh, I'm helping the guys with their grounding and their their test equipment, yeah. uh, how they set it up, the mm-hmm. the power that they use for it. Mm-hmm. Every every outside power source that you've got around your room is influencing the electrical stuff that you've got in your room. Yeah. So uh, you, you've got to you've got to balance that. Right. Uh, and and that's what I'm helping these guys do with their testing facilities. Right. Uh, but yeah, we're well on the way, and I'd like to help some of these other people out there in your audience that are making coils by giving yeah. them a few real good steps that they need to follow. Okay. Uh, well, so, I I I actually want to be one of those people, and um, uh, my other. I have another friend that is going to be just all up in this stuff. He's the one that actually turned me on to Nassim Haramain. Um, 
so that that all sounds wonderful. Um, are you still open to visitors? Me? Yeah. Uh, I I didn't want to get into this, but with we've had a visit, and I was told cease and desist. We know who you are. We know where you live. Stop. Well, that's that's not what I was trying to go at. I'm just talking more more along the lines of me coming to see you. Well, yeah, and uh, you know, get a first hand look at what what you got. And all yeah, that. we could do that. Oh, uh, the the people in the group have made coils, and they're doing the experimentation on them at this point because all uh-huh. of them have better equipment than I do to test with. Okay. Uh, so this is sort of spread out around the world. Okay. Uh, we, we've got yeah, a That's fun- a good thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. But what we, state we, are you in, Larry? I'm in Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. Right, right. He's yeah. in Arkansas. So it's not your time. Yeah, I moved a lot to- closer to you since yeah. the last time we yeah. were on the radio, Larry. Yeah. All right. I'm only yeah. about four or five hours away from you now. Oh, great. What was the name of the town you're close to? Kansas City. Okay. <laughs> town. Well, well, Kansas was a City. Town. It was a, uh, yeah. Yeah. You said city. I meant the little town that you're close to. I remember you told us once. Yeah, I'm I'm in Independence. The, the Independence, that's right. Very so it's just like almost due north. I'm in Hot Springs, Arkansas right now. So. Yeah, straight up 71 Highway. Yeah. So uh, you would know the distance from here to there more better than I would, but. Uh, so yeah, what are we looking four or five hours drive? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I would very much like to to come and see you and 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 go fishing or he tour won't, your he your, won't like it. Rob, take taking fishing. Huh? If you don't take Larry fishing, he's not going to like you. Well, yeah. he needs to come down here for that. We've got three <laughs> nice lakes uh, for fishing: Lake Hamilton, <laughs> Lake Wachita, and. Uh, uh, I've fished Washington more. before, and that is a phenomenal lake. Well, there you go. Well, you have a reason to come see me, and I have a reason to come see you. Wow. Like see the the power of the Internet and communication when it's handled uh, properly. Since we got shut down, uh, I am now making fishing lures. Oh, cool. Uh, we, we're a, – a buddy of mine borrowed one of my lures, one of my spinnerbaits. <sighs> that my father and I made years ago. And we we changed it by putting a snap swivel on it to hold the blade so that you oh. can change the blade. Oh, okay. And he picked that idea up and ran with it. And we've got a, a, a buzz bait frame with regular spinner bait things on it. And I have been, we just started last year, and I've been catching fish till who laid a chunk on that thing. Wow. Uh, we've got different sizes, different shapes. Everything's got a changeable blade. They work cool. well. Well, you guys make well, it sound like everything can be improved with a little patience. Yeah, it can. You know, if you just yeah. sit and look at it long enough and think about it, hey, yeah. this is how it'll work. Let's try that. Well, that's, I still feel a part of the world that's timid and afraid to try something they don't know because I'm attached to it. Now I'm married into it, you know. But before when I was like wandering and whatnot, that's the attitude I carried. Hey, what's over that hill? What's down that road? What's down this river? Yeah. And now I'm safe. There's I'm, not enough curiosity in the world anymore. Yeah. Now I'm stable. I was just thinking and about that the yeah. other day. You know, people aren't curious anymore. They don't want to explore well i still explore but just mentally rob i'm not talking about you oh we're convenience oriented talking about the idiots out there in the world but i'm an idiot out there in the world i know it just a different Uh, flavor no you're not (laughs) thanks rob i appreciate that (laughs) you're you're smart enough to realize that that maybe you don't know everything but there's things out here that can change the world and it's being kept away from us. See, the yeah, things cause... we've missed out of and lost out on are extreme. It's a the group extreme yeah. oppression that we live under, mm-hmm. uh, just based on lost 
uh, opportunity? Well, it's it's a group based venture, but we're taught to do it in an individual fashion. That's doomed to failure. Yeah, you, you can't accomplish everyone, nothing alone. Everyone for himself, um, but we're all in it together. What? But, <laughs> <laughs> Stop making sense, well, Rob. We're all in it together, but you're <laughs> on your own. <laughs> No, but before we get finished, sir, I'd like to help some of these guys that are making coils out with a couple of real easy fixes. Okay, Larry, you have the floor. When you're winding your coils, the reason that that the transformers and things that we've got now producing power only do one thing each is because of the iron core. Okay. The, the iron core limits it to one thing. Once that iron core saturates, your magnetic field cannot build any farther. We've eliminated that so that the magnetic field can build as much as it wants. Just take out the iron core, do everything air core. That, okay. will, that will handle higher frequency. It's got a higher switching capability. It produces less heat. Uh, there's a lot of things about it that's good. Multi-circuit. A one-circuit coil only does one thing. Multi-circuits. That way you spread out the amperage. You divide it equally between all of those circuits. That's how you get more amperage out of the wire. It's not changing the properties. That's just how you get more amperage out of it because you're putting less amperage through each individual circuit. Gotcha. Also, don't cross your wires. Every time you cross the wires, every time you twist them together, that collapses that magnetic field. Hold your hand out flat. Your fingers are all running right next to each other. Uh -huh. That's the way the wires should run. Right. Flat and not one set on top of the other. That that's allows. The whole point, that's the whole point of uh, internet cable or Cat Five cable. It's called twisted no. pair wiring. That keeps the the magnetic field from being interfered with. Yeah, and and when the magnetic field is collapsed like that, you don't get static on your line. Right. That, that's so the that's the whole point of twisted pair wiring on, on Cat5 cables. Yeah. Sorry, just wanted to interject that. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. So you you put two circuits next to one another and leave an empty spot. That's one, two, three. Okay. You put two more circuits together, that's four, five, and leave an empty spot. That's uh -huh. six. That gives you your three, your six, and you move around to the other side of the next two, and that gives you your nine. Three, six, nine. Okay. Nine, nine is the transition point between positive and negative where all of the power happens. Okay. Oh, so, now, but when you're running in AC, you're running in both directions almost right. simultaneously. Right. So... When you wrap one circuit clockwise, the circuit next to it has got to be wound counterclockwise. That keeps the magnetic field rotating in the same direction all the time, allowing it in a 12-circuit coil to create three perfect vortexes, three perfect tornadoes that are circulating in the ring of that donut. Oh. to increase the magnetic field in the center. That, boys, is what's going to make your coil work. That's where we, the magic is. Yeah. That's where the magic is. We we increase the magnetic field from 4,000 milligauss to, to 18,000 milligauss just by doing that. Wow. Hey, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, Rob, but I just thought of something. Maybe instead of approaching this as a form of free energy, maybe the word free needs to be removed out of the equation. I in agree. Place. Absolutely. 100%. All right. It, like, it, would, what the term would, free energy was, was, was created by the detractors. Right, right. Um, most people never even called it that. Most people called it zero-point energy 
or uh, cheap energy or something along those lines. Well, I, I'm just suggesting energy is just where you're gathering the power from. It comes from the ether. That's yeah, it comes from the nine. Right, but to build up your audience, you've got to have in this time in life a like a, an advertising slogan that catches people's attention. And yeah. free energy has just been well, fucked yeah. over so badly. I, I agree. I agree. The term has been uh, uh, used as a as a weapon against us. Okay, so maybe it's time. And it's just like it's same. It's like saying conspiracy theorists, same kind of shit. Right, right. But maybe it's time for the people that are doing it, like you know, like Larry, to come up with a descriptive word to sell the the concept to the public to listen to his answer. Yeah. Because that's what this is. It's a salesman thing. Mm-hmm. I've got the slogan yeah. that is going to catch everybody, and they're all yeah. going to line up. Well, you got the same thing going on here without the repeat business, and that's How about never going to solid state energy creation. Well, all I'm saying is that's not going to that's not going to bring investors in. You're, that's basically what it is, right, Larry? Yep. Solid state energy. Well. It, in ours, it's not even solid state because it's not electronic. <laughs> oh wow! Ouch! That's just we, dented my but skull. It's still solid. I mean, it's a it's well, solid yeah. state. Just means there's no moving parts. Yeah. The and, the the man that made the Earth battery that works, he's mm-hmm. got about four hundred dollars worth of capacitors and resistors and diodes and all kinds of funny stuff. Yeah. We have eliminated. Every single piece of electronic equipment except the frequency modulation, modulation. board. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Is that like looking at great. a motherboard, Larry? What is a frequency it, modulation board? It's like a volume switch on your radio. Oh, okay. So it's not that's a board; it. it's a dial. Or yeah, it's a dial. All right. It's a dial. All right. Because see what I mean? Words mean different things depending on what you been taught they mean so i have to decipher sometimes what you're talking about to well, understand yeah, like the dial you use on a, on a stereo to change the fm <laughs> station that's a frequency modulator yeah. right 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 okay now how do you change a frequency with your mind so that you can be on the right frequency that's what i'd like to know <laughs> take your shoes off yeah go outside yeah set your butt on the ground under the street mm-hmm that changes your frequency. At will. That brings right. you back. Yeah. That brings Ground you back in tune with the earth. Yeah. But you, you got to sit on the earth. Every day. You can't do it. I need to get. You can't do a chair or you, or you can't do a blanket. You need to sit right on the your ass on, the, you know, pants maybe. But No, you can, you can do a chair. You can do a blanket. Uh, Rife. Royal Rife. The, the Russian gentleman. Yeah. He's got over five thousand frequencies that will cure things Mm -hmm. and every time i post him facebook takes it off oh yeah of course they will yeah yeah Yeah. but you've got grimner with real liberty media.com and he is not one to uh, tell you what to post so you've always got that because you can come here and do radio podcasts. yeah you are always welcome here larry yeah i'd love to come back anytime you want me well, well, you already are. We're, we need to do. Uh, we're we need just, to do a regular update with you because I want to know as soon as you roll out these things, and I think the people need to know, and uh, we need to spread it as far and wide as we possibly can. Now so, we're at the last five minutes to make it to the hour, but according to the clock, we, well, it's four. We got eleven minutes of, to make a two-hour show. You want to do right. the whole time up, Larry? It's up to you. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Okay, to do. I would say then. Did you spend the last of it with you two guys and give us ten minutes of interesting conversation? Well, and then I'll close. Did you finish with your your points that you were trying to make to make it easy on people? Uh, not quite. Go ahead uh, and wrap that up then. The the starship coil is beautiful, but it's the two dimensional representation. It's what you get when you put it on paper. Right, and you you guys are are winding that on pegs flat. Right, well, I, that I starship that. coil is nothing but a series of equilateral triangles wrapped around those pegs. Right. So, stop that. You've already got your starship coil. Wrap that around the toroidal shape. Right. 
Just make and, that instead of 2D, 3D. Yeah, exactly. And and that will solve all your problems. The Starship coil does a lot of really, really good things. But most people are winding that in a single circuit. That's right. a 12 yeah. circuit coil minimum. Got it. Yeah, if I remember right, it has like 26 points or something on it. Yeah. Uh, Standard one. Uh, yeah, I think they're 10 degrees. Something no, like that. They're, yeah. they're 20 degree separation, like on our coil, and that gives you 24. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hey, and Larry, hang around after the show is over for a bit. So if you have anything you want posted on the notes, like perhaps your Facebook site somewhere, people can find you. If they hear this show and they're curious, they can pursue you through it. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll do that afterward, but I just wanted to let you know now. <laughs> All right. Got yeah. a few more okay, minutes, so guys. Starship coil uh, needs to be 3D, not 2D. Right. Okay. What else? That's really basically it. If if you look at Solomon's Temple, it yeah. tells you the firing pattern of these coils. 258, 174. 258, 174. It, it, it's, in the, it's in the columns on the face of Solomon's Temple. Okay. So we're not doing anything new. Nothing no, I don't believe that. I don't believe that we are. I, I think this is all rediscovering old technology. Yep, it's all there. It's all been written. The 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 three spirals that two of them are going clockwise and one of them's going counterclockwise on the <laughs> cave walls from the cavemen are showing these designs. Right. Those people that wrote on those walls were from the previous civilization that knew how to do this stuff. And they did it all with frequency. Just like the Tibetans that are stacking the two-ton rocks just by beating drums, blowing horns, and chanting. Oh, you know how much they make out of the pyramids. How impossible it was to do that. da 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 da, da on and on and on. But it's there! Wow. No, it's yeah. not impossible to do it. It's impossible to tell us how they do it because we would see how easy it was. Move that 50-ton stone with your finger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well, I would... meter says hi, Larry. Hey, hi. and I would recommend that if you hear this show and you're not really sure what all this has been about, a good starting point would be the, the links that I, I put in the notes uh, about, bro, or from me, Sam... Harriman, uh, he's a he's a uh, theoretical physicist, and that kind of threw me off at first, but I listened. And if I'll listen and make something of it, it's not that hard. You know, it's easy enough for me to get it. So hmm. if you've got an interest in this thing, pursue the links to solidify what we're talking about. And it'll just make more sense of it. Vortex math, Solomon math, pyramid math, it all leads to this. Shawberger did this. Everything that Shawberger did with water, you can do with magnetic fields. Right. John, so, Don is flashing her boobs at Larry like a crazy science groupie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. See, Larry, you, you have influence. We're at the end, too, guys. Yeah, so, yeah. But, uh, uh, Larry. But um, you've done a lot for next? people, Larry. Don't, don't, don't forget that. Yeah, you, you, got, a, you got a following. Um What's when? Did, when is the next? Uh, well, how should, what should I say? Uh, the next step uh, of progress that you expect to see in your group there, then and, and in the open source publication. What's the next big event uh, that's coming up? Well, we're we're writing the technical manuals. Yeah, we're we're figuring out the safety steps that need right. to be taken to protect everybody. Uh, we're we're learning how to size Faraday cages. Okay. Uh, it it's a matter of, of educating twelve guys that are all smarter than me. Uh -huh. uh, just the steps that we take to keep it from being harmful, like everything that's going on in society today. Right. right. Okay. 
So when do, when do you? I, 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 what I'm trying to do is finger. When would be a good time to have you back on the radio again to give us an update after something should have happened? Well, uh, or do you month, want an opportunity? Month, two months, wait, three months? No, no, no. Or do you want an opportunity to make a, a weekly appearance or something? We can do a whole new show. To add on I think to the a RLM, thing is probably a bit much for Larry, but yeah, that that's a little bit too often. There's not maybe really a once that a month. Yeah, do. I'm thinking once a month or maybe once in, month in three more. months, come back and touch base again. I mean, I I'm just trying to set it up so we don't go another. What I don't even know how long it's been a year, two years since the last at time we had you on the radio. Yeah, at least a year. Yeah, so I I, I want to stay on top of it and keep in touch with you and bring you on on a on a semi regular basis as far as being able to get updates on where you're at and what you're doing once a month would be would be good uh like i said we're we're writing manuals now and and discussing safety factors uh that's the only problem that people without an electrical background have they don't know how bad it is yeah okay well oh, yeah let, it, can, it can be dangerous yeah. let's yeah. let's leave the the doing for the shows open to Larry and we'll accommodate you. When you feel you got something you want to do a show about, yeah. let me know and then I'll Well you've I'll got wire now so you can yeah. you can catch me or flash on wire yeah. anytime. I have my wire open all the time. It's uh, okay. that way, everybody yeah. I think pretty much everybody with a brain's migrated away from Skype. So Yeah, but when, you, yeah. when you feel like, you know, something important and needs to be spoken about you exactly. get a hold of me and we'll do the show for you at, <laughs> at your convenience so that we don't got to pester you because there's a lot of yeah. people that would like to hear the things that you have to say about a lot of stuff and we only yeah, had we two hours so that didn't cover can't get it. enough yeah. can't get enough of it larry there's a lot more that we need to hear so, I didn't realize that it had already been two hours. Yeah, see, yeah. that's what I mean. And Grim's got his that, program that, coming it up. Did. That was quick. We got post production to get this thing on. And yeah, it was a spur of the moment thing. I just thought, let's just do it. Have it was. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to do this. Thanks, this Rob. I, for I, I skipped breakfast for this, by the way. I hope you know. <laughs> but thanks, thanks to Rob Works for for thinking of doing this. I thought he wanted to do a show with you. I didn't know he wanted me involved. And now I'm glad well, I yeah I, you 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 brought him to the table yeah. and and I know you're into this Vinny and, brought him uh, to the table Vinny and, and besides you needed to get over your thing we oh yeah about, yeah but, oh yeah so I'm glad that has been squared away you oh don't yeah have sure to feel like you can't uh, yeah be, yeah. be uh, friends with Larry and yeah all stuff, but so. and a special a special great thanks to Larry for. Uh, coming over here and you know spending his time explaining the same old thing to us simpletons that for whatever reason we're not getting it so that we can physically right. make it work it's very confusing to try to give the knowledge and that's their job is to spread it to, to all the rest of us anyway and so that there's the show for the dork table on this uh first of march 2020 with my special guest larry woods and my partner in crime, Rob Works. So outside of that, I'm going to over and out. You got anything left to say, go for it. Go for it, Larry. There you Keep go. up the good work, guys. Don't ever let somebody tell you that it can't be done. Try it and find out. Thank you, That's Larry. It. Thank you, Rob. Thanks for coming on, Larry. Thanks. Later, Appreciate everybody. It.